Do you want to print TPU, but you just don't know how? Do you own a K1 Max and can't get it to work right? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. We're going to print some flexible TPU filament on my K1 Max. We're also going to go through the settings and show you exactly how to do it, um, as well as a couple mods you'll need in the process. So in the start of this video, we're going to go ahead and go through the modifications and little things that you'll need to do to the printer uh, to make the TPU run reliably through your machine. Um, the next step, I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick time lapse of this part here being printed on my machine. Uh, during that time lapse, I'm going to go ahead and go through my settings that I use to turn out this quality of a TPU print on the machine. Uh, following the time lapse, I'm going to go through, um, show you a close up of this, and so you can see all the good little details about it, and then a couple little finishing touches at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. All right, guys, what I have for you today is going to show you how to run some TPU through the K1 Max here. Um, first thing I always want to do, um, we're going to go ahead and take the top cover off. Uh, you are not going to be printing with the top cover. Um, and the door will be shut during the process to stop any drafts, but you don't want it to get too hot, so it has a little bit of place to take the air out. So I have this preheated already. We're going to go ahead and uh, retract the filament that I have in there now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unload. Now I have my filament system ran so I can load my filament all from the front uh, right through here. Um, I can remove the poop chute here for the A1, kind of show you the setup I got. So I basically just have it going through this little pulley system and I can print from any one of these here. And then I have a PTFE tube um, running back there up to a 90 which then goes up to the original tube out of the K1. Actually, this is an aftermarket tube, my original one I actually wore through. So that'll come down and I can actually load everything right from here and not have to mess with reaching back here, um, trying to get that filament in the tube back there. I did originally have this with a gap and not all the way down. This made it a lot more convenient to use. So anyway, uh, unloading there. Um, and now once it's retracted, I should be able to just turn my filament roll back here. And now means that we're going to print TPU. We don't want to pull it all the way out because I want to leave some filament in the uh, run out sensor back here. Um, reason being is I have a mount that I designed to mount on top of this machine. So I just put this up and I kind of stuff it in the cable chain right there. Just enough where it's about there. So plenty of freeway. So what I designed are these brackets here. Um, it's a little bit, a little cumbersome to do one handed. So I'm going to pause it up here real quick, uh, put these up and let you guys kind of see how it works. All right, so I got that mounted up there. Um, so this here clamps on the outside of the machine and the inside of the machine. It is free, so you can move it forward, backward, wherever you need it. Um, same on both ways. It is very sturdy. Um, the other thing I got going on up here, uh, I wanted as little friction as possible. So I designed this with the roller here. And it's got some normal skateboard 608 bearings. And then this just slides up and out to change the filament. Um, now this is a three piece design. When you take this up, it will kind of collapse on itself. So it does take two hands to uh, change filament and stuff like that. Not a big deal most of the time, because most of the time when you're changing filament, you're not going to be holding the camera at the same time. So um, from there, this just has a super short, about four inch or so uh, path to the extruder here. 
which makes the TPU actually usable in the K1. Because if we were trying to run this TPU here through this uh, pulley system and a PTFE tube, even a factory side mount with the TPU does not work super well and you'll start getting under extrusion from the drag. So with this setup, we have absolute minimum drag because it takes basically nothing to roll this around. Um, it is just long enough where it can kind of go around uh, without unraveling itself and it works extremely well. I have done this a few times and it seems to work quite well. Um, originally I tried this without the bearing set up and I just felt it ca still caused a little bit too much drag, um, was leaving too much out. And this is just kind of the best of all worlds for this setup. So now I got it extruding here and you can kind of see it pulling already. Not too much, oh, it's already done here, so. Um, and with this setup and the K1, um, I'm able to reliably and easily run um, anywhere from 80 to 120 millimeters a second at a 0.2 layer height. Uh, so that's quite good. Um, and it still retains quality and all that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here also is I do have a Diamondback nozzle. Um, I have noticed that Diamondback nozzle does help TPU prints incredibly well. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, I do have a textured PEI sheet. Do not print with this freshly after you clean it and putting nothing on it. You will tear the bed. It will be extremely hard to remove. Um, what I will generally do is do a fresh clean on the bed with hot water and soap and then I will come back over it, wipe it down with IPA and then I will do a thin layer of this Amazon Basics purple glue stick that makes it stick quite well and also uh, when it is done you can easily remove this part just as if it was a normal print. So anyway, I am printing a pen holder out of TPU, uh, a little bit of a tire stack for a mechanic friend of mine. So I'm going to go ahead and get to that. Uh, I'll do a quick little time lapse of that and I'll kind of explain some of the settings that will need changed in the process. So we're going to get to the point of the video here um, and that is the settings. So this part here, if you're looking for something super strong that comes out great, um, what I basically do is I do two walls on most of my things. If you need it to be a little bit stiffer than this, or if you want it to be a little bit stronger, but yet a little bit more pliable, you can bump that up to three walls. Um, I use four top and bottoms on almost all of my TPU prints. Uh, it just seems to be a good number to make sure that it ends up with that smooth top layer and free of defects on the bottom layer. It just seems to be what works best for me. Um, going on down, again, I use cubic infill on all of my TPU prints. Um, a lot of people will use grid, but with it being a flexible, I want it to feel pretty uniform. So trihexagon, cubic, um, probably not honeycomb. So basically anything that is going to give support in all directions. Um, so that's why I choose cubic. Again, I wanted a strong part, so I chose 20. If you want it more flexible, um, pliable, um, then I would drop down to a 10% roughly, um, possibly 15 if you want something in between. Um, the other things that I adjust here, um, I have infill combination on um, as far as the infill overlap, etc., and stuff like that, I do keep those all pretty well the same. Now this print, I wanted pretty quality um, with the tread pattern. Uh, first layer with TPU, I always choose a, uh, 0.25. Um, it gives you a little bit better adhesion to the bed and less first layer problems with TPU. 
I don't know why I've had an issue with first layer on TPU in the past. So that's what I've been doing, and it's always worked well for me. Layer height, I choose 0.15. If it's a less detailed print, I do crank this up to either 0 0.2, 0 0.25, and some prints even uh, 0.3. Um, seam pattern, I do use nearest. Let's see, what else did I change here? Um, nothing different in that. Speed settings, probably the most important ones on TPU. Uh, my first layer, I do 40 millimeters per second. Uh, first layer infill, I leave at 80 millimeters per second, which is a standard. The outer wall, I do run at 75 millimeters per second, uh, though that could be cranked up if you want it to, probably at about 90 or so. Um, you may want to check with your nozzle. Your nozzle may not like it as much. Like I say, I do run a diamond back, and even this TPU will not stick to that diamond back. It is great for this. The inner wall. Um, Sparse infill, internal solid infill, and gap infill. I run all of those at 120 millimeters per second. That's uh, quite good um, for TPU. Um, a lot of printers cannot achieve that. And my K1 Max originally with the stock nozzle and the running through the PTFE, I could not even, I could barely achieve 80 in the past. So these couple modifications, well, it's almost, I mean, it is 50% faster. Um, I finished this print in three hours and 42 minutes, which is impressive because how much infill and stuff this has. Um, I do still have the slowdown for overhangs and stuff like that on. Accelerations, uh, normal printing, 12,000, outer wall, 8,000, inner wall, 10,000. Um, that's all your basic ones, 12,000 travel. Um, I probably have that a little bit slow, um, but as far as TPU goes, um, you're really not going to gain much because all your time is tied up in the, in the slow printing for the rest of the print. Um, all my jerks are set at 9 for my K1, no matter what I'm printing. Obviously no support. Um, this doesn't need it. Anytime you're printing TPU, avoid supports as much as possible. If you require supports, hopefully you have a bamboo machine where you can run a PETG interface layer or something like that. Because um, removing supports off of this TPU is an absolute nightmare. As far as my other stuff, if you're doing something where you need a skirt or a brim, um, you really sh likely should not have to have that. Um, TPU sticks so good to the plate I've never needed a brim in TPU. Um, if you do, I would probably go to a 0.15 brim object gap. Um, other than that, it's going to be extremely difficult to get that brim off. Um, next here, uh, my primary settings, my flow ratio. On TPU, I did have to go clear up to 1.1 on the flow ratio. Now, normally I'm 0 0.95, 0 0.96 on all my pet G and PLA. This just seems to what works best on this printer. Um, I could probably drop it down to 1.08 or something like that. Um, but 1.1 has worked well for me on a lot of things. Uh, and I just I, I feel like I need to stick with that because it seems to be what's working well. Um, Nozzle temperature. I know a lot of people like to print around 210 uh, with TPU. Running this higher speed, the 120, um, I found that 230 is what I've settled on and 60 degree bed temperature. So 230 nozzle, 60 bed. And then I do max this out at uh, max volumetric speed of six millimeters per second. Um, that is slightly Likely on the conservative side, and the only place that I would really gain that, even at the 120 millimeters per second, is on the infill. So I could likely bump this up to 8 millimeters per second, gain a little bit of time, um, or millimeters cubed per second, I should say. 
Um, and I could gain a little bit of time just from the infill. Um, overall in the slicer, uh, we really don't gain much. Right now I have it set at six. I'll bump up to eight. We're currently at three hours and 42. Uh, we'll see what that slice comes out to. Three hours and 19 minutes. So gain about 23 minutes uh, by bumping that up to eight. And that does not change any of my outer wall or inner wall settings um, at the 0.15. Now, if you're printing 0.2, um, you will start to slow it down from that. Um, but point si or 6 millimeters uh, cube per second seems to be the sweet spot of reliability and finish quality. So, all right, so the TPO print finished here. Uh, looks like the time lapse got cut a little short for some reason. Um, so let's go ahead and get this off the print bed. Take that camp purge line off here quick. Now, this is 20% infill. Uh, two walls is all. Now it is stiff, but still rigid. Um, honestly, it feels very much like a tire. Um, if I were to print these again, um, I did want something stiff and fairly heavy for the purpose. Um, but if I were to do this again, I would probably try closer to 15, possibly even 10% to make it a little bit more flexible. But I think he will be extremely happy with this uh, due to he does work at an actual mechanic shop and this is going to go on his toolbox. So something that feels like a real tire is going to be ideal. Um, and like I said, that glue stick on the PI sheet, I just gave it a good old twist and pull and it came right off with no problems whatsoever. Um, print quality overall is pretty good. We do have some minimal stringing down inside here, but overall pretty good. Uh, I could probably change restraction settings a little bit. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of the finished project. I will get you a little bit better photos out of this outside of the printer. All right, so we got that print pull off the printer here. Um, and a little bit better lighting. Uh, we can kind of see here on the top. Uh, we got some real nice letters all the way around the top. Um, very little surface defects there. And inside, we do got a couple little blibs and blobs from the TPU stuff. Like I say, that could probably be um, figured out with a little bit of retraction settings, etc. Uh, but as far as the outside goes on this, I mean, it looks like a tire. It's super smooth, super crisp. The lines are great. The tread patterns are smooth. Um, the bottom side, um, besides seeing a little bit of that glue, uh, was a perfect first layer on that. Um, and it's just super clean uh, for a TPU print. Now, the other thing on this, um, it takes a lot of force to actually get this thing to squish. Um, and that's that 20% infill and pretty heavy walls here. And as far as going this way, ugh, I don't think I have the ability to do that. Um, this is an absurdly strong part. Um, I think my friend's gonna be extremely happy with this. Again, TPU looks as good as any PETG print that comes off this printer. Absolutely, absolutely impressed with this machine so far. I will leave a link below for my um, filament spool holder um, with the bearings in it. Feel free to uh, give me a download on Maker World there. Um, shoot a like, um, leave a comment on it. I appreciate all that. And if you like these tips and it worked out well for you, leave me a note in the comments. Let me know if it worked for you. Let me know if it didn't work for you. Let me know how you liked the video. And if it turned out great for you, shoot me a subscribe. And uh, hopefully it will help you out with some more printer tips in the future. Thanks for watching.